Hello and welcome to another Albion Online Dev Talk. In today's video, I want to go in depth with the new territory fortifications coming to Albion Online. With the launch of the Foundations update on April 15th, all guild territories in Albion Online will receive an updated layout. These layouts define the natural obstacles and possible fortification upgrades in that territory. In total, there are five different layouts. At the beginning of the season, territories will begin to generate fortification points, a new per-territory resource, which resets at the end of each season. The amount of fortification points generated in a territory depends on the territory energy level. Players with the Manage Fortifications Guild permission can use these fortification points to start upgrades in the territory. In the Foundations update, there are three different fortification elements players can upgrade. Walls, gates and guards. Clicking on a guard will open the upgrade UI for a group of guards, which displays the cost as well as the effects of upgrading guards. Once confirmed, the silver cost is taken from the guild account and the guards upgrade immediately. You can only upgrade each guard group once a day, however. Upgrading walls and gates works similarly. Clicking on them will display which walls and gates are within the selected upgrade group and displays the upgrade costs and improvements. Unlike guard upgrades, walls and gate upgrades always take until the end of the next territory prime time to complete, so there's no way to upgrade your walls in response to a declared attack. So what's the point of upgrading your defenses? Well, during the prime time, walls and gates simply prevent your enemy from just walking into your territory. An enemy will have to destroy them with a siege hammer to gain access to your territory. Further upgrading your walls increases their hit points. Defenders are also able to use their siege hammers to repair walls, so having more hit points gives you more time to repair before an attacker breaks through. Gates also increase in hit points and they come with some additional benefits. Each gate has an embedded gate crystal. As long as that crystal is intact, defending players can simply teleport through the gate, allowing for quick retreats into the territory and fast sally action. Once the crystal is destroyed, this ability is lost for the remainder of the fight, and the gate itself can take damage from attackers. Note that defenders can only repair the damaged gate itself, not the crystal. Defenders with the Open Close Fortification Gates permission can also open the gates manually, which allows any player to pass through. So be careful when opening the gate, as you might not be able to close it before the attackers rush in. Note that attackers can also open gates from the inside, which opens additional tactical options for attackers. Speaking of attackers, how do you attack fortifications? Well, during most of the day, the territory defenses are shielded from attack by the power of the territory crystal. During prime time, however, attackers can use the new Siege Banner item to weaken that protection. To raise a banner, a player with the Raise Siege Banner permission needs to use a Siege Banner from their inventory. If they do not have a previously declared attack, they will raise a Raid Banner, which alerts the defending guild that a raid has started. If they do have a previously declared attack and they raise their banner in the first 15 minutes of prime time, they will raise a conquest banner. No matter which is raised, the presence of a banner will begin to degrade the force shield protecting the fortification and allow attackers to begin tearing down walls and gates. There is a limit to how many players are able to attack a wall at once, so attacking armies might want to spread their forces and work on multiple different walls at once. Of course, raising a banner alerts the defending guild and allows them to rush through the territory to defend against an incoming attack. In the case of a conquest banner being raised, the territory crystal actually channels its strength into the guards, significantly improving their combat abilities to help with the territory defense. The presence of banners changes how territory battles are being played out in Albion Online. Previously, whoever controlled the territory tower at the beginning of the prime time would take control of the territory. Now, a raid or an attack only ends once a banner bearer makes it to the territory tower and channels it, or once the defender kills the bearer and controls the banner long enough for it to despawn. Note, however, 
that the banner cannot leave the proximity of the territory and is dropped on the ground if the bearer leaves the area. If the attackers have not successfully completed a raid or conquest by the end of prime time, the battle is declared a victory for the defenders. This new mechanic ensures that the battle for a territory and its fortifications actually happens during the prime time, instead of having the attacker occupy a territory and its defenses before the defenders even have a chance to man the walls. Additionally, it ensures that a superior defender has a chance to end an attack early if they defeat the attacking army, instead of having to sit out the entire prime time. Finally, in the case of a raid, it ensures there is a clear moment which defines the beginning of a raid and gives defenders a chance to rush back to the fortification before the walls are already broken. Should any walls or gates break, or any guards die during a battle, they will respawn once the attack is over. Should a territory be conquered, however, all of its upgrades are destroyed, but the spent fortification points are transferred to the new owners, allowing them to begin upgrading the territory immediately. The fortification upgrades also reset on reset days and at the end of each season. This is partially to ensure there is a continuous economic need to use stone for territory upgrades, but most importantly it allows us to make changes and improvements to the fortification system between seasons. After all, this is an entirely new system for Albion Online and we'll probably have to tweak it a few times before it is final. But if fortifications reset, how do we make sure upgrading them is worthwhile? Well, first off, the cost of fortification upgrades is based on the quality level of the region. This means upgrading a fortification in a low-value region is cheaper and therefore more likely to be worthwhile, even if the income from the territory is not as big as in higher quality zones. Secondly, we're introducing a new territory reward, the Activity Bonus Chest. This chest is located next to the territory tower and is filled once every day at the beginning of the territory's prime time. How it is filled depends on the activity in the local region, as well as connected regions. This means guilds also benefit from activity in connected static dungeons. Activities which fill the chest include killing mobs as well as gathering and fishing. Basically, anytime a loot item is generated or a resource is harvested, there is a chance for the same type of item to also appear in the activity bonus chest. The chest fills at the beginning of prime time, however the owning guild can only loot it at the end of prime time, and it can be looted by any raiders that make it to the territory tower. This of course means you want to have strong walls and strong guards to keep raiders out of your territory. All in all, fortifications represent a major change in how territory battles play out in Albion Online. Guilds can strategize which upgrades to prioritize based on their own battle tactics and the natural environment of their territory. Attackers can explore new strategies and new builds which may be successful in breaching fortifications. And the activity bonus chest might reprioritize which territories are attractive to hold and how to treat players that enter your local region. Now that we're at the end of this video, I hope you have a good idea of what fortifications are and how they will change Albion's territory battles with the Foundation's update on April 15th. Of course, as the update name suggests, there are plenty of opportunities to expand upon this feature with new ways to attack or defend a territory. But that's a topic for another time. For now, we're very much looking forward to seeing the construction of the first fortified territories at the start of the next season, and we're very excited to see what fierce siege battles arise.